thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name. You're so good, Lord. You're so good to us. Thank you, God, for your favor upon us, for your life in us. Just take a moment. Come on, fill this room and just tell them thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, open your mouth right now just for a moment. Come on. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice, yeah. Oh, be exalted, God, be exalted, God. East Bank Demoraro Regional Training Program, better known as RTP. We are grateful to God one more time via this medium of having our graduation exercise for the second time. Last year, we broke new grounds, being the first time having our graduation exercise done in this manner. And we are thankful to God one more time that we are gathered, those that are in the confines of their space, wherever you are viewing, and wherever you are participating, I encourage you to tune in, stay right where you are, trust God for the presence that we know that is here. And right where you are, you can experience the presence of the Lord. Matters not the space that you're in. Believe the Lord for such an anointing that will fill your heart, transform your life, and cause you to soar as the Lord will help you. Today we are thankful to God. Graduation exercise 2018, the year 2021, for those that are graduating. At this time, I'd like to invite one of our lecturers, Pastor Terrence Haynes, known as Brother Terry, and he will open in a word of prayer. Brother Terry. All right, while we are getting set for Brother Terry to be with us, with technology, as we continue to trust God, we understand that there will be some glitches here and there. Nonetheless, we will proceed. As I open in a word of prayer, I encourage you to join me those that are within the confines of this auditorium, to stand with me. And those that in your space, you can join in the position that you're in. And let's believe the Lord. Let's trust God for what God will cause to happen in our presence. And so, Father, we are grateful to you one more time. God, we are thankful for this graduation exercise. 
God, we praise your name for yet another moment, yet another time. God, that you have allowed us. God, and we are grateful for this opportunity. I commit this time, Lord God, into your nails, card, and capable hands. I pray, God, that you will minister by the power of your Holy Spirit. God, as we proceed with the program, I commit every aspect of the program into your hands. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that you will take full control of everything that will be done and said. In no other name, but in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, most precious and holy name. And all the people say, Amen. You may be seated, those that are here with us in the auditorium. My name, if you didn't know before, is Pastor Wesley Rowe. And I am your chairperson, helping to guide through the program for this evening. And so with a few words, I would like to welcome each and every one. Welcome our superintendent, Apostle Ellsworth Williams, who is with us. His dear wife, Pastor Carmen Williams, the supervisor of our program, that is the RTP, Elder Desmond Rogers, and the administrator of the RTP, our dear, our own sister, Elder Idris Husbands. It's good to have all of you here present with us this evening. We are thankful to God for yet another moment, yet another time that we can come at this time in our graduation exercises. As we continue on, I encourage every student, especially the graduates, to be in a position to receive from the hand of God during this time. And do not be confined to the space that you're in, but open your heart and open your life and believe God that he will downpour into your heart and into your life. I can sense the presence of God in this place. And I know that he is present because the Bible tells us that he is always present. And I'm assured of his presence with us. And so once again, welcome to each and everyone. At this time, we'll have a time of worship. And with technology, we will do it with technology in the way that those that are responsible on the technical side, will bring up a time of worship. Just a short time, and we will proceed with the program. I'll ask Pastor Kwame Wilson to stand by with his exhortation, after which we'll have our own administrator, Elder Idris Husbands, uh, bringing a report to us on the regional Georgetown East Bank regional training program, and she will be able to do so after the exhortation. And I will continue to fill us in with our program for this evening. And at this time, we have an exhortation, and it will be done by one of our lecturers, Pastor Kwame Wilson. Pastor Kwame Wilson, at this time, will bring such an exhortation. Hi, greetings everybody. I hope you can all hear me. Um, it's an honor to be here and to uh, share at this graduation um, celebration. I want to say congratulations to all the students that are graduating class of 2021. Uh, I remember it was 2004 that I sat where you are. Well, not physically where you are. Uh, we had the honor of reaching at the National Cultural Center uh, but I remember after three years of studies, myself and it was about uh, over 35 of us started and just a few of us were at the graduation. And it has changed my life. I remember Apostle Williams and the team, they laid hands and they prayed for us. 
And one of the key things that Apostle would have uh, prophesied over that class is that we maybe we may we be known as a firebrand. Never left me, never left my wife as well. We've always had that in our hearts. And I thank God for all of my classmates um, from 2004. And so I know that today is a special day for all of you. I know that you're all excited. And um, let's go into the word. So I also was believing for a word for the class and I heard the Lord say, soar, soar. And so the theme for this exhortation, it is time to soar. It is time to soar. And so Isaiah 40, 31 says, Isaiah 40, 31, and it says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Again, Isaiah 40 and 31. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you will speak to our hearts and you will challenge, especially the students that are graduating. We pray that this word will remain in their spirits forever as they are excited after three years of studies and they're graduating today. I pray, dear Father, that this will not be the end, but this will be the beginning of some awesome things that you will do in and through their life. I pray that they will never forget today because today will be the foundation upon which God you have to pull them into great things. And so with the cream declared, they're going to soar in greatness. They're going to soar far into success, soar into their destinies. They will all hear you say, well done, good and faithful servants. And so we give you praise and thanks because your spirit moving to and fro in and through all of our lives that are gathered, celebrating with them today. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So with the time that I have, I want to encourage you very quickly. I heard a story, I don't know if you've ever heard a story of um, a, a farmer that had both a uh, bamboo tree and he also had some ferns. And so he planted both the fern and the bamboo. And of course, after some time, he kept watering but after a year, the fern grew and it spread and it was just taken over. But the, the, the bamboo tree that he planted, it wasn't going anywhere. So one year passed, two year passed, three years. And some friends came and said, why are you still watering this plant? Why don't you get rid of it and plant more ferns? Because after all, look, the fern is spreading. And so he said, no, you don't understand. The bamboo tree is not like the fern tree. Just give it some more time. And of course, that some more time became five years. After five years, finally, he saw the bamboo tree sprout out of the ground. And to his, not to his shock, but to his friend's shock and surprise, within six weeks, that which was not growing, <laughs> suddenly grew 90 feet into the air. What was happening was that the bamboo tree was growing down into the soil and getting a strong foundation and setting up some other um, bamboo trees and so forth. And so the, the custom or the older bamboo tree, tree grows is that it takes uh, five years before it actually comes out of the ground and then it grows in six weeks, it grows very tall, all right? And so it was a lesson for all of his friends. And I wanna say the same for you as you graduate this year. Understand that as you come, come out of Bible school and then you join into your churches, into your communities. Don't compare yourself with anyone, anyone that is there, irrespective of what they're doing. Give God praise and thanks. Understand that God is doing something unique in and through your life, and you can't afford to compare yourself. Comparison will be the killer of the great things that God will do in and through your life. Always remember the bamboo tree. Study the bamboo tree. And so there are three things I want to leave with you. And number one is, if you're going to soar, you need to ensure that you wait upon the Lord. I actually remember the song, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about the night and day. I spread my wings. And one of the things I keep hearing the singer said over and over is that I, 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 I. And while that sounds nice, it sounds positive and you need to be a part of uh, what if you're going to soar, you need to ensure that you're part of it. I want to say that you can't do nothing without the Lord. And so for you, even as you graduate today, understand that in order to soar, you must depend fully upon the Lord. And depending fully upon the Lord means you're going to have to wait upon the Lord. It means that sometimes you, in your own self, you may want to do things that God didn't say to do. I remember Moses saying, Lord, if you would not go, I'm not going. And I pray that as you graduate today, that you just won't do things just because you want to do things. You just won't do things because everybody else is doing. The foreign is 
is in the light, the foreign is, is spreading its wing. You wouldn't try to do things because everybody else is doing it and you wait upon the Lord. And that's what we say in Isaiah 4, 10, 31. That's what his, his challenge was. It says, they that wait, but they that wait upon the Lord. And there are benefits for waiting upon the Lord. And he showed us, he says, when you wait upon the Lord, he says, you will renew your strength. And so what caused you, and I, I, I want to acknowledge Apostle Williams and Pastor Carmen and all the other pastors and apostles that are a part of the graduation as well. But one of the things, one of the reasons I'm sure for you to sit with Apostle Williams and Pastor Carmen and they will teach us that caused them to last for so many years in ministry is because they've learned the art of waiting upon the Lord. And as you graduate, I want to challenge you to learn the art of waiting upon the Lord. Because when you wait upon the Lord, he is going to renew your strength. When you wait upon the Lord, he is going to cause you to mount up on wings like eagle. It is he, the one that owns everything, the one that owns it all, the one that has called you into ministry, the one that has created you with a purpose. The fact that you're still alive, just like that farmer when his friends say, why don't you get rid of the bamboo tree? God has kept you alive because he knows that there is greatness on the inside of you. And he is saying that it is time for you to soar. But guess what? Don't soar outside of him. Don't do anything outside of God. And as you stay in him, he will cause you to mount up on wings like eagles and you're going to soar. And as you soar, you will stop and give him the glory, the honor, the praise because it will be his doing. Not only will he cause you to mount up on wings like eagles, but they said you're going to run and not grow weary. You're going to run and not be weary. How many of us would love to do ministry and not be weary and not be tired? And sometimes you were there in Bible school and you had so many assignments and you were aware, you're tired, you were saying, I can't wait to finish. But look, finally you are finished. But guess what? You're not finished because now you have work to do. But I challenge you to ensure that you wait upon the Lord because while waiting upon the Lord, he is going to, he's going to be the one that is going to ensure that you're not weary while you are running. So he's going to ensure that you have the kind of energy that keeps you going. Remember the energizer bunny that keeps going and going and going? You're going to keep going and going. Say, how do you do it? And you're going to be able to say, it's because I learned to wait upon the Lord. And he also said, not only would you run and not be weary, but you will walk and not faint. I'm sure that you would want to learn the art of walking and not fainting, but it comes when you wait upon the Lord. And I want to challenge you as a class to wait upon the Lord. The second thing I want to challenge you is I want to ask you to move in the speed of the Holy Spirit. Move in the speed of the Holy Spirit. And we find it in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus, when he met the disciples, he said to them, he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So he spent three and a half years with them, teaching them. And of course, after he died and he rose again from the dead, he said to them, do not leave Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. He says, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you shall receive power. And then this is what's going to happen. I'm going to talk about the benefits. What he was saying to them after he himself spent three and a half years is that here, you can't do nothing without the Holy Spirit. And I want to say to you, I would believe that all of you, now that you're graduating, you're all baptized in the Holy Spirit. But just in case you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want to challenge you. Don't get into ministry. Don't, get, don't continue doing anything until you receive a fresh in filling of the Holy Spirit, because it's the Holy Spirit that's going to make the difference. Move in the speed of the Holy Spirit. Even as you're soaring, soar in the speed of the Holy Spirit. And that's what Jesus says in Acts 1 and 8. He says, you will be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And I believe that God's going to call some of you from this very class to begin to soar. Your names are going to be known all across your community, all across this nation, Ghana, all in the Caribbean, in North America, to the ends of the earth. It's going to happen, but you're going to have to learn to move in the speed of the Holy Ghost. Don't you go do something and then say, Holy Spirit, that's what I'm doing. No, let the Holy Spirit, the Bible said those that are led by the Spirit, are the sons of God. So even as you graduate today, it's no room for, it's, it's, it's not a time for you to say, but Holy Spirit, I'm telling you what to do. No, allow the Holy Spirit to tell you what to do. And you walk in obedience to the Holy Spirit. And as you move in the spirit of the Holy Spirit, you recognize that he has anointed you for communities. He's anointed you for people group. He's anointed you for, for whatever the needs in your community, in your nation, whatever the needs, he's anointed you. And you will not be able to say, I can't do this and I can't do that because he's going to equip you to get every assignment done. And I want to say to you, it is time to soar. But as you soar, move in the speed of the Holy Spirit. And the last thing I want to leave it to you as you soar is that be very fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. 
the whole purpose of soaring is not about the light, the camera, and the action. I believe in all of my heart that everything goes back to the beginning. And in the beginning, we saw in Genesis 1, 28, that God says to the, to the, the, the man and the woman, he, he says, and God bless them, and he said, be fruitful and multiply. I want to challenge you that as you graduate, you're not just graduating to soar so people can say, hey, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, pastor so-and-so, it's so awesome. But you're graduating and you're soaring so that you can begin to produce after yourself. You can produce more spiritual sons and daughters, people that will stay, people that may join RTP and come into RTP and be able to grow the way that you've been able to grow. I am challenging you to be fruitful and multiply. We saw the same with the apostles as they were with Christ. We saw them, you know, depending upon him, they went out, they did their miracles, they came back, they testified of how wonderful it was. But all of a sudden, when the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, and Peter stood up and preached, suddenly, the area that were 120 suddenly became 3,120. And then suddenly, we saw addition taking place. The Lord was adding to the church, and then the church started to multiply. I believe that the Lord is releasing a grace upon your life for multiplication. So not only are you soaring in this season, but the Lord's going to cause multiplication to take place in and through your life and in and through your ministry. In other words, stop taking yourself for granted. Stop looking upon yourself and think, you know, I'm just so-and-so. I'm just from so-and-so place. God is anointing you. From this graduation, he's anointing you and setting you up so that you can go forth and be fruitful and multiply. It is time for us to see sons and daughters that fear the Lord, that are anointed, that are not just moving in the speed of the Holy Ghost, but they move with miracles, signs, and wonders. And I believe that you are among the generation that God is not only filling with his Holy Spirit and with his power, but you are among the generation that God is going to use to perform miracles, signs, and wonders in your community, in at your workplace, in your business, at your churches, wherever the Lord will have you to go, the Lord's going to use you and you're going to see miracles, signs and wonders. Not only that, but God's going to use you to raise up other spiritual sons and daughters who are also going to be miracle workers. In other words, stop settling, stop looking down upon yourself. You have come through three years, just like the bamboo tree, you were three years in Bible school, and it may have looked as though nothing significant was happening in and through your life. But understand that God is, is making you. God has been molded and making you. And even after today's graduation, God will still continue to mold and make you. But the onus is upon you is to remain in him, wait on him, move in the spirit of the Holy Ghost, and understand that God's going to use you to be fruitful and to multiply. As I go today, I want to say to you, to continue to run, run your leg with excellence, run your leg, always remembering that there's a generation depending upon you. You can't afford to give up or to quit. Run with excellence, knowing that generation is looking to you. And I challenge you to be focused. I challenge you to be determined. I challenge you to run until the end or fight until the end. It is God that has called you. It is God that has brought you through three years of studies at RTP. It is God that is saying it's time for you to soar. So if God has sanctioned, if God has sanctioned, who, who in heaven, who on the earth, who, which demon, which principality, which powers, who can stop you when God has blessed you? I want to say God bless you. Congratulations to all of you. And I'm looking forward to hearing the great testimonies that come from the class of 2021. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Kwame Wilson. Uh, indeed, it's such an inspiring word. And uh, yes, you can go ahead, put your hands together, and let's bless the Lord. Let's encourage our pastor, Pastor Kwame Wilson, for such an inspiring word, as uh, he made mention of uh, soaring in the Lord. And the way that one soars, that you wait on the Lord. You run in such a way that you would not get weary. You walk, you would not faint, and be fruitful and multiply. Remember, soar in the Lord. Class of 2021, soar in the Lord. Thank you very much, Pastor Kwame 
Wilson, one of our pastors on the east bank of Demerara, uh, Caneville, one of the, um, we would say, fastest growing church in one of our regions here in Georgetown East Bank, doing a wonderful um, work on the East Bank at Caneville with his dear wife, Pastor Natasha Wilson. Thank you very much once again, Pastor Kwame Wilson, for that exhortation. At this time, I'll invite our administrator, hard-working, our own dear elder, Sister Idris Husbands, to come and present the administrator's report. Williams, I appreciate your presence gracing us at the graduation, Pastor Carmen, Pastor Rogers, the supervisor, technical personnel in the technical room there, <laughs> Allison and our staff, <laughs> um, Pastor Ro. And for those who are viewing, at home. I want to thank you for gracing us with your presence. Oh my gosh. My task this afternoon is to give the administrator's report, of which I will do right now. The following report covers the period from January to December 2021. And by saying this, most of you will recognize that our school year or training period has changed, not September to July, but January to December. Amen? For this new year, the COVID-19 protocols are still in place. Hence, the continuity of virtual classes. As we examine the following, the information covers the items stated. One, new registrants. For the January to March term, the number of students registered was 15. However, in the second and third term, five students withdrew from the classes due to severe, sorry, due to several reasons. Two had clashes with their work time clashing with the time for lectures. One has never linked up to any of the sessions because of personal problems that she does not want to disclose. Another has financial problems and she has put our attendance on hold until she sorts out things 
And the last student was pregnant and was encountering some prenatal problems. And she also has put our attendance on hold. Having discussed each individual situation, the response was to start afresh in 2022. This was accepted by the administrator who further enlightened them about the procedure involved. Year two. The number on roll was eight. Three students have withdrawn for the present time, where the following reasons are, one student was given a scholarship to do her master's degree, and the time for her classes clashes with the times for lectures. Thus, she is unable to cope because of the demand for each program. So let me just that she has put on hold or involvement. The second student has been transferred to Port Kaituma Post Office as a postmistress. And as such, she did not link up to continue classes. Therefore, our situation is also on hold. And the third student fell ill during the second term, and she was told by the physician not to fatigue herself due to the nature of our sickness. However, she will continue in 2022. Presently, there is only five students for the year two class. Year three, the number of final, student, final year students is 15 from a batch of 20. One student from the batch of 20 continued our year one program with the present year one class. The other four has not indicated their desire to get on board and complete their training program. The 15 year three students who have completed the three years training program are the graduates for this evening's proceeding and will return to their local fellowship or assembly as assets to the spiritual along with the physical and social atmosphere of their churches. Any other matter? Firstly, it should be noted by all students and lecturers that there will no longer be an in-class examination. At the end of the lectures, the lecturers are expected to do assignments, group work, or in-class virtual examinations on a different date. And the, apart from the stipulated day and date for lectures, also, the submitting of scores to be recorded and be given to the students who are monitoring their progress. Finally, please encourage your potential leaders to be registered for the new school year, January 2022. The date, sorry. The date is not fixed as yet, but registration will be done from the 11th right on to when we will be starting our class. 
In closing, I want to reiterate my profound thanks to all the lecturers for a job well done, especially those who had to undertake in lecturing in other topics that were done by Apostle Winston McGowan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elder, Sister, Idris, Husbands, our Administrator for the Full Gospel Fellowship, Georgetown East Bank Regional Training Program, better known as RTP. Let's encourage her with another um, round of applause, please. Thank you. Hard working amidst all of the, the challenges um, she is pushing forward and for which we all are grateful for the work that you are doing, Sister Idris. We are grateful and we are thankful. And I'm sure you will hear more coming out from the supervisor who is undertaken, who have undertaken with the blessings of our apostle and superintendent and our regional leader, Ellsworth Williams. And so more will be coming out from uh, Elder Desmond Rogers in that respect. Uh, at this time, we would welcome uh, Pastor Carmen Williams. Let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor Carmen Williams, who will be doing the awarding of the certificates. So, Pastor Carmen, uh, please do. <coughs> Good evening, everybody, and good evening to the graduates. I would just like to join with those who went before me and those who are coming after me in saying congratulations to all of you. It, it was three years of hard work, determination, and lots of encouragement. But tonight, here you are, receiving your diploma. Congratulations again. And we know that this is just the beginning, that God has brought you this far. God has seen you through those three years, he is more than able, more than able to see you through and to give you all whatever you need for the journey ahead. So be encouraged that God is with you, he's on your side. And tonight, glory be to his name. Here we are. Our first graduate is Alicia Alexander, and we have Natasha Budu. Yes. Congratulations, Natasha. Next, we have Onika Carter. Congratulations, Onika. And then we have Juliana Dover. Yeah. Woo! 
Congratulations to you, Juliana. And then we have Lani Durant. Lani Durant. Congratulations, Yulani. And then we have Shelly Green. Congratulations, Shelly. And then we have Amelina Matthews. Thank you. Congratulations, Amelina. And then we have Kevin Maxwell. Thank you. Congratulations, Kevin. Althea Medus. Althea Medus. Thank you. Congratulations, Althea. Sonia Morris. Thank you. Congratulations, Sonia. Theodosia Peters. Thank you. Congratulations, Michelle and Laurie Thank and you. Richmond. Laurie, sorry, Laurie and Richmond. Congratulations, Laurie Ann. Sorry about that. Virginia Rodriguez. Congratulations, Virginia. But before that, we have Keisha Wills. Thank you. Sorry about that. I think that's it. I think that's it. So, what? Yes. One big congratulations to all of you. God bless you. You have been faithful and continue to be faithful in what God has committed and will continue to commit into your hands. Congratulations again. God bless you. Let's do it again. Let's put our hands together again. Amen. Bless the Lord. Class of 2018, 2021. You've worked hard, but the work has now begun. Out into the fields, and you will be charged to function in a moment. But especially, I would like us to put our hands together once again for Kevin, I think the only young man that graduating is two. I think I saw one. Kevin, the only young man graduating in this batch. I know Apostle will make mention of that. So let's encourage Kevin. Uh, Kevin, I can't remember his last name again. Maxwell. Maxwell. Kevin Maxwell. Let's put our hands together again and encourage Kevin Maxwell. <laughs> Along with the precious um, sisters that are graduating as well. And so we thank God for each and every one of you. At this time, Apostle Ellsworth Williams, the superintendent of the Full Gospel Fellowship of Churches in Guyana, will come and do the function, uh, charge the function, Apostle Ellsworth Williams. Praise God. Congratulations to Class 2021 for a job 
well done. May God continue to bless, anoint, and inspire you as you continue this journey in the fulfillment of the mandate that God has placed upon your lives. I think uh, Pastor Kwame Wilson has done an excellent job in sharing and exhorting. And as a matter of fact, I believe that he also within that exhortation charged you. And um, so what I'm going to do tonight is just add to the charge. And uh, verse 6 of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 uh, says, as a matter of fact, if you look at verse 5, it says that our sufficiency is of God. In other words, everything we need to succeed in this ministry and in life is found in God. There is no lack in God. Everything that is required for you to prosper, for you to remain on the cutting edge, is in God. And it says in verse 6, that this same God has made us able ministers. Able ministers. And I want us to embrace this. You are not just another minister. You are not just another person who went to Bible school and you have graduated. You are not just another person who have been called into the ministry. But you are an able minister. You are not weak. You are not lacking in anything. You are just like any of us. Paul says you are an able minister. But an able minister of the New Testament. Of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kill it. But the Spirit gave life. So you are an able minister of the new covenant, of the new testament. You are not a Pharisee. You are not a scribe. You are not to get into legalism. You are not to become the law. But we are supposed to be able ministers of the new covenant that has to do and based and founded on the finished work of Calvary. What Jesus has done for us and what he has given to us as a result of his grace and his mercy. Nothing that we could have worked for. Nothing that we could have strived for. But as a result of his grace, he has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Because you see, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. And we are the giver, as it were, of life. God has given us that ministry of restoration to pull people to bring them back from death, from destruction, to a place where they have and enjoy that life. And they themselves can be the persons giving the life. In other words, we are to give life. We are to speak life. We are to bring restoration. We are not the ones that facilitate death and destruction. You are, you are an able minister. 
Go and preach the New Testament. Go and preach the word. And you must remember that a new is concealed in the old and the old is revealed in the new. And when we talk about a new covenant, we are talking about from Genesis to Revelation, that bloodline that we see, that Christ-centeredness that we see. We need to preach Jesus. We need to preach the cross. We need to declare that his kingdom, his rule has come to planet Earth. Go, preach Jesus. Preach the Christ. Preach the kingdom of God. As able minister, preach, 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 preach. Because this new covenant is based with better promises than that of old. Let's go to dead communities. Let's go to dead churches. Let's go to dead families. Let's go to dead life. And let's speak life. Let's see resurrection. Let's see restoration. As able ministers, we can. We can. We can. And we must in the name of Jesus. God bless every one of you. Amen. Charge to function. Apostle Ellsworth Williams, our superintendent. Well put and delivered. Let's once again put our hands together. <laughs> Students, charge to function. Go and do as the Lord will have you to do. Coming now to make the presentation awards the best graduating student is none other than Pastor Elder Desmond Rogers. Thank you very much, Pastor Ro. And let me again add my voice to what has been said already in terms of congratulating the students who are graduating this evening. I'm pleased to announce that after careful consideration based on the academic performance and other uh, criteria, the following three persons have been awarded prizes in terms of first runner-up, uh, second runner-up, and best graduating student. So let me go uh, second runner-up, second runner-up, Onika Carter. Onika Carter. Good evening, thank you. The second runner, first runner up, sorry, first runner up, Lorian Richmond. Lorian Richmond. And we say congratulations to you, uh, Lorian. We're going to put our photograph there for a little bit of emphasis. And we can say, again, you can do it virtually. You can put it in the chat. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations to you, Lorianne. The best graduating student, ladies and gentlemen, for class of 2021 is Theodosia Peters. <laughs> and congratulations to all of you.
Thank you, Pastor Desmond Rogers, um, making the presentation of the uh, best graduating students. And now we will hear from the best graduating student, none other than Sister Theodosia Bombery Peters, who will speak at this time. Apostles, pastors, elders, leaders, families, friends, and my fellow graduates. A special good evening to you all. I am absolutely honored to be representing the graduating class of 2021. On behalf of the graduates, I would like to thank you for joining us in this auspicious occasion. Graduation is a time of reflecting on the past and looking onwards to the future. I can clearly remember how eager I was to start RTP. And I know my fellow colleagues share the same sentiment. We were eager to know more and to expand our knowledge in the word of God. As we reflect on three amazing years, it is easy to say that RTP has played an important role in helping to shape us as leaders. Three years ago, when we walked into RTP, we had no idea what to expect. And boy, we were in for a treat. We have seen hidden potential and abilities coming forth, especially in our communication, homiletics, youth ministry, and social issues classes, just to name a few. When COVID-19 hit our nation in 2020, and in-class learning was suspended, a little doubt came across our mind. On the way forward, our main concern was how and when will we complete Bible school. Then came a solution, online classes. However, another hurdle was there to cross, which was the accessibility of adequate internet. But through it all, we overcame these challenges and we are here today. I am pleased to announce today that the Fogosa Fellowship has gained 15 leaders or missionaries who are equipped to spread the word of God throughout this nation and the nations of the world. We are the end time leaders who will fulfill the great commission that the Lord has commanded us to do. To the lecturers who illuminated our minds, we are grateful for all moments spent under your instruction, whether it was Pastor Joe Johnson, who always reminded us to be on time for classes, or Pastor Parson, who made us laugh even when we were tired from a long day's work. Or Pastor Desmond and Pastor Garrett, who never played with their assignment. We appreciate you all. To my colleagues, who made the nights go by so quickly by sharing snacks 
or answering complex questions. Even though those answers were completely in the opposite, we have all made it. To our families and friends who have encouraged us to keep on going even when we wanted to quit. To our administrator who has been so supportive to RTP and the members and pastors of our local churches. We thank you all because without your encouragement, this journey would not have been easy. Most of all, we thank God for his guidance and wisdom throughout these years and who will continue to be our guide. I leave with you Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 3, which states, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Let us labor for the Lord. Let us be leaders with character and integrity. Throw pride through the door and live in humility. The great Charles Spurgeon said, We are not responsible for the souls that are saved but we are responsible for the gospel that is preached and for the way we preach it. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. Thank you for listening and God bless us all. We can put our hands together again for Sister Theodosia Bumbury Peters, best graduating student of class 2021. Come on, let's do it again. Thank you very much. Very well said, very well put together, very well articulated. And we are so happy that you have represented the class of 2021 so eloquently. We thank you and we bless God for all of the graduating students this evening. At this time, once again, I will call Apostle Ellsworth Williams, who will come and uh, pray and do as the Lord will have him to do. Apostle Ellsworth Williams. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Theodosa, for such a tremendous uh, uh, word, I should say, because what you did was that you shared what happened, but you also challenged uh, the graduates and challenged us all to become everything that God wants us to become. I am glad that this class is graduating because I don't have too many more questions to answer. I tell you, this class is a class of leaders, like, like she said. And I'm so blessed that we in the Full Gospel Fellowship, like she said, are 15 more leaders, 15 more workers, 15 more people to be able to advance the kingdom. And so it's praying, praying. So what I see in this class, I see leadership. And I see lots of teachers, prophetic teachers in this class. People who are going to dive in the word and bring out nuggets. People who are going to get in the word and bring the revelation of God that is necessary for the times. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray that the Holy Spirit will grab a hold of every one of you in a fresh way, in a new way. Lord, in the name of Jesus, like the exhortation say, that they all will move with the 
speed of the Holy Ghost. They will allow the Holy Spirit to carry them, to direct them, to lead them, and also to fashion them. And so right now, breathe a fresh Holy Ghost. Breathe a fresh Holy Ghost. Breathe a fresh Holy Ghost on every one of them. Fresh unction, fresh anointing, fresh move of God in their lives so that they will not be stuck and stay here today. But Lord, every day there will be growth. Every day there will be uh, movement from glory to glory to glory to glory. Holy Ghost, over to you. Holy Ghost, take a hold. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, lay your hand afresh. Holy Ghost, new touch, move in their lives. In the name of Jesus. And so, Holy Spirit, continue to move. Continue to work. As we thank you, Lord. As we thank you, Lord. That you will continue to develop them for your glory. They will be known. They will be heard. They will be seen. And your kingdom and the nations of the earth will be impacted as a result of them. Surrendering and yielding to the leading of the Holy Spirit. God bless every one of you. God bless every one of you. God bless every one of you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Apostle Williams. I send such a rich anointing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless the Lord in this place and amongst all that are graduating uh, this evening. I really trust God. I am so happy that I am part of what God is doing in these end time with our uh, regional training program. And coming now, bringing closing remarks, and we'll close us in a word of prayer. None other. A man that I have grown to respect a whole lot, and who have pushed us um, with RTP. Yes, you've pushed us in uh, adopting ways that we are not accustomed to, <laughs> um, but he's keeping, he keep pushing us, and we appreciate that very much. Very humble, very simple, but a profound man of God, Elder Desmond Rogers. Amen. When Apostle Williams asked me to take over the coordinating role of RTP, we had a, a discussion about this, and he knew just how much I kind of process how this is going to go. I give God thanks that we've had a great foundation of all those who've gone before in terms of the leadership, in terms of the development and the growth of RTP. My assignment is really an acting one because I still see, we still see Pastor McGowan, Dr. Winston McGowan as having that role in the RTP. And so his legacy, his instrumentality, his passion, his commitment over the years would not be lost on us. As a matter of fact, those who have graduated today would recognize when they receive their certificates in hand that he is still the person who signs on the certificate. Pastor McGowan, we give God thanks for you, for your inspiration, for your deep commitment we know that RTP is still on your heart. And so as you continue to inspire and encourage, we continue to pray God's strength upon you, your continued deposits in our lives as God enables you 
and so that RTP will continue to reflect the things that you've invested and challenged us to be and to do. I'd just like to say before I pray that, again, I congratulate the students or the graduates now. I have to get my words correct. The, this, these graduates, any one of them, you know, um, and every one of them, all of them, they shone so well in the classes that we taught. And Apostle Williams made mention of that. These students were sharp. They were bright. I mean, they were they asked all kinds of questions. They, would, they were always ready for the task. You always had to go prepared. And uh, today, we congratulate you. But I want to ask you, do not see yourselves just as graduates who have passed through the program. But we at RTP, we've been thinking a number of things. How do we strengthen what is happening? And we believe that the people who are best equipped to sell the RTP vision and the program are our graduates. So we are coming after you, Sister Idris has begun to engage some of the graduates, but we want to, to keep in touch with you. Whether we have a, a graduates association or whatever the case might be, whatever we call it, we want you to be spokespersons. We want you to be ambassadors. We want you to be people who would represent, who would sell uh, RTP. And so please come back and give your ideas, your thoughts. Please make your contributions. Please encourage others in your local churches um, to join RTP, to become a part of RTP. And so the present students who are in RTP, they have something to look forward to by your inspiration. So the Students Association would be one thing. For while you're a student at RTP, we encourage student participation, student engagement, student connectivity. And had it not been for COVID, we might have been able to do some things differently. But we trust the Lord that our future in the RTP in terms of the student engagement will be something that we will grow from strength to strength. And so that those who leave, that you come um, through RTP, many of you leaving with more than the certificates in hand, the diplomas in hand. Some of you, we hope, as has happened before, would find even your spouses here at RTP. So there are lots of stories to be told where RTP is concerned. We want to also say that the lecturers who are uh, serving RTP, we are so grateful to God for each and every lecturer. And Pastor Rowe made, made mention of that earlier. Because had it not been for you, your sacrifice, your commitment, your dedication, your devotion to duty, we would not have had this graduation today. And so our, our lecturers, they invest so much. And I'm so grateful for the changes, for the adjustments that you have made. Yes, we want to do more. We're going to have our own lectures training, lectures engagement. Uh, we're going to have times when we would do upgrading of our lectures and so on in terms of the technology and other aspects of, 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 of the instruction delivery and so on. So because we want to have RTP as a really good program. It must be a standard program that anybody can look forward to. So having passed through RTP, you know that you've got something good. And those who invest as lecturers, um, the present and the past lecturers, they have given us something to work towards. And so we want to build on that. For Gospel Fellowship of Churches in Guyana, we have a number of RTP programs. And one of the things that we've been talking about with Apostle Williams is how do we connect this vision so that the education of our leaders, whether they're in the fellowship or they come from outside of the fellowship, how can we do this in a way that connects our graduate, connects our students? Because there are resources that could be shared. There are things that could be learned from each other. And there are ways in which the students and the lecturers from the different um, uh, regions could connect, and so we hope that we can get uh, those things done. We are looking forward to the start of a new academic year in January 2022, and as Sister Idris said, the date has not been finalized. Not that we didn't have a date in mind, but in our review of this past year and what we anticipate 2022 could bring, we want to do some things prior to the start of the new academic year so that we don't disrupt the classes and disrupt our lecturers and asking them to do some things. And we want our students who come 
also in the RTP from 2022 to have a, 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 a different kind of experience. Even the orientation and things like that that we will do. And I'm saying all of this because I'm trying to sell this RTP so that you who are listening will go and tell your friends, your, your, your members of church, your associates that listen, sign up for RTP. Sissy Idris um, has begun to work on getting some materials out, so we'll be putting those materials out. Uh, we'll be letting you know in terms of the flyers and so on, so that you can pass a, a, around. And the beautiful about COVID, COVID has brought many disruptions, many challenges. But well, one of the best, well, good things about COVID is that it allows us to provide opportunities for those who really wanted to have uh, uh, an RTP experience, a Bible-based experience, uh, uh, an experience like we had, uh, like you had graduating class. There are others outside of Guyana, outside of Georgetown, outside of uh, the, the regular places where this might have been possible in terms of, it might not have been possible because they would have had to come to a physical location. So we hope that we can provide opportunities for those who have started and, and are discontinued for one reason or the other to begin to continue to engage RTP. Or for those who want to get um, into this program, that they can do so. We've begun to, to receive um, interests, um, queries from people outside of Guyana. And that means that if we're going to go that way, since we're going to go that way, not if, since we've been going that way, that we have to do lots of things on our part to get our, um, our program um, strengthened and so on. And so I want to give God thanks and praise on behalf of the staff, the, the lecturers, on behalf of the um, current uh, batch of students, the first and second years, and the, 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 the graduates who, have, um, who are leaving today. We want to say to you and those who have already left in our program, we want to say to you, let's connect as a great family to carry this vision forward. Pastor McGovern, again, thank you very much. And all the lecturers, thank you very much. Apostle Williams, as our, not only our superintendent of the fellowship, but the person who oversees the Georgetown East Bank District, our, our regional leader, the, the Georgetown District, our regional leader. We want to say thanks to you for your support. There's never anything that we need, an idea that we have that Apostle Williams was shooting down. He always gives us scope to explore and to pursue. So, Pastor Rowe, anything that, I, that we put you under pressure for, you have to take it back to Apostle Williams because he gives us the scope to do whatever we want to do. And so, thank you. Um, not only is he the superintendent, but he's also a lecturer. He said, Pastor Carmen, also a lecturer in the program. So, we give God thanks each and every one of you. And so God bless you richly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I would like to also say thanks to all those who are on the program who did something or the other. Pastor Rowe, thank you so much for sharing today's session. Thank you. You're a lecturer in the program, but you're also a dearly beloved leader in the, this, in the region. And your commitment and passion to RTP has never waned. So thank you. Thank you for leading us so well. We say thanks also to Pastor Kwame Wilson, our, our speaker, guest speaker, who did, uh, in his own inimitable way, give that word. That was really a great challenge. We thank God for you, Pastor Kwame. Thank you for sharing with, our, with, with all of us, not just the graduating class, but all of us. And we'd like to say thanks to the technical people, uh, those who have been working, uh, Allison, Brother Jomo, Brother Harry, Sister Renee, we want to say thank you very much. And let me add uh, my own thanks to what has been said already about Sister Idris. Thank you very much, our very committed um, administrator. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you all. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have come to another graduation. Lord, we have a, a class that's going out there to soar. They're going out there to to accomplish, to fulfill purpose. Lord, and we pray in the name of Jesus that you will cause them, Lord God, to walk into the experiences that you have determined for them. Lord, we thank you for the RTP. We thank you, Lord God, for the lecturers, for the current batch of students who remain in the first and second year. We pray even for the new intake. Lord, we are trusting you for big class. Not because we are excited about numbers, but because we believe that you want to change, Lord God, lives 
and there is a destiny, Lord God, that's to be changed through RTP, Lord, for those who will come. And so, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to provide, continue, Lord God, to make available, Lord God, the resources, human and otherwise, that we need to see this uh, program function and function well. And so, Lord, we bless you, we give you praise, we give you thanks in your mighty and precious name for a great and wonderful evening. And for all that lies before us, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen on Zoom, you can hang around a bit. You can put some, um, some uh, messages in the chat really to encourage our graduating class. Um, graduating class, we know you probably have something arranged among yourselves. Uh, you enjoy yourselves there too. God bless you richly. Uh, we're going to stay on for We're going to give you a chance for a little bit before we close the session. So please make use of the time in expressing your congratulations and all of that before we go. God bless you. I got to examine every praise I give, every hand I lift. Did it come from a pure heart? Did it come from a clean heart? Cause I know these days, strange fire is being offered up thinking it's your desire. But no, you deserve more, more than your children pulling on a show. Cause I know my I'm